Alrighty boys, welcome back once again to another video, how are you guys doing? Guys, today we're going to be going over the newest hero to find her way into Fortnite Save the World, which is known as Stoneheart Farah. Now, this hero is actually pretty freaking great, we ended up checking her out over on Twitch.tv, where I ran through the whole new quest line, which by the way, that's how you unlock this character, ran through the entire new quest line, ended up getting her, spent an hour messing around with her on stream, then spent like an hour or two off stream checking her out, and I gotta say, my first impressions of this hero are pretty freaking high. She's the first ever bow and arrow hero to come to save the world, and she's freaking amazing. That's who we're going to be talking about in today's video. Uh, before we do jump into it, a quick shout out to Black Hammer for using my code at gfuel.com. I know it's a meme at this point, okay, but I'm just saying my code is 30% off if you want to support the channel. You know, I'm just, you don't have to. I love you either way, but if you want to get a little bit of the fuel, then you can do so with the link in the description. But yeah, let's go and jump into the video. Enough sellout time. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so as I said at the beginning of the video, of course, today we're talking about Stoneheart Farah. If you do want to unlock her, do the No Dancing quest line, which is the new quest line that came with the new season, which is Chapter 2, Season 2 of Fortnite Save the World. And if you do run through it and you unlock her, then she's the first ever bow hero, and you're probably curious exactly what she does. Now, what she does is actually really cool. I absolutely love this perk on paper, and I absolutely love the way that it works in practice as well. So her standard perk is Cupid's Arrow. On bow hit, the the arrow will splinter, dealing 20% of damage to three nearby targets, and the commander perk is Cupid's Arrow Plus, which says on bow hit, the arrow will splinter, dealing 60% of damage to five nearby targets. Now, this perk works in a few interesting ways. Some ways it keeps it from being a little overpowered, and in some ways it works pretty good. So, in the way that it works pretty good, from what I notice, there is no cooldown on this perk, meaning every single time you hit an enemy, it is going to stray off to other enemies and hit them as well and deal damage to them. At least in my experience, I haven't really noticed any kind of cooldown between it. So every single time that I've shot an enemy, I've noticed uh, a little bit of a spring coming off of my arrow and hitting other people or other husks. The way you're going to know it is that it's going to be kind of like a purple, purple little line that shoots out from the main husk and hit a few others. Now, of course, what you're probably thinking from reading that standard perk is that, yo, that would be pretty good on a Zenith build. I mean, you do 20% of damage, you hit three nearby targets on top of the main one. I mean, if that thing crits, you're going to be able to freeze a bunch of enemies, right? No, I did a little bit of testing on stream and I found that, you know, no matter how much I did it, and maybe it's just a super rare chance, but I shot so many arrows back to back to back to back to back to see if I could get it to crit and freeze multiple enemies. Unfortunately, and kind of fortunately, because it would be a little bit overpowered, um, it does not work. So you will only freeze the actual enemy that you shoot, you know, immediately the, the head, the base enemy that they splint off of. So that will be the only one that gets frozen. The rest of them will actually take damage. Um, because of this, me personally, I think Stoneheart Farah is best used in the commander slot, not only because you're able to get more damage and hit more enemies, making any sort of bow in the game an AoE bow on top of what it already does, but because it's just freaking fun, man. I've been using the Vacuum 2 Bow and Arrow, which is a bow that ended up getting a buff, which by the way, this whole bow buff going alongside this new bow hero, let me tell you guys something, okay? This new season, you know, the, the new content drop that we got, it's not perfect. Uh, we didn't get, you know, so, so much stuff to where it's like, oh my God, it's revolutionary, right? But this hero with the new bow buffs has brought me so much joy to save the world. Just in that three hour stream that I just did, being able to use Stoneheart Farah with the new and improved bows has been so much fun. It, it, it's ridiculously insane like she's a she's a good hero i'd argue she's a meta hero but on top of that she is just ridiculously fun and a bow that 100 percent makes her even better is the vacuum tube bow or you could go with the vendor tech seeker for the purpose of this video i'm going to do the vacuum tube bow because it's absolutely amazing and i love the way that it works with her the only downside of course is that you have to use it in water missions but lucky for me there was a four time drops of rain and you know your boy ain't miss out on it so the vacuum tube you know bow that we're actually using is going to be crit damage crit rating crit damage crit rating and the final perk hitting an enemy with this weapon will cause chain lightning to strike up to six enemies and it requires the bow to be dra uh, drawn back at least halfway and because of the buffs to the bows this happens every single time so every time you shoot this bow you are going to get the arrows splint off of the base target to hit five other people as well as a huge chain lightning going throughout all of the husks that are around you now i know you guys are going to have questions does this work on 
on Zenith. It does not. I believe the only bow that might work on Zenith is the Vendertech Seeker uh, in terms of allowing, you know, the, the final perk or the other arrows to actually freeze enemies. This one does not. The Chain Lightning does not crit, so you are still better off using this with Stoneheart, but I gotta tell you, man, using this bow, as you guys are probably seeing in the gameplay in the background, using this bow with this character is absolutely bonkers. Now, if you guys are curious as to what hero loadout I ended up using for today's video, it's a pretty basic hero loadout, but definitely one that you don't have to use. Um, as you guys know, whenever I'm trying to get the highest damage, I go with the highest damage team perk, which is totally rocking out. So we got Stoneheart, Farah, and the Commander, totally rocking out as the team perk with Subwafer's Battle Beat, Locked and Reloaded, Sure Shot, and Quick Scope. Now, Locked and Reloaded, more damage after a reload, Sure Shot, you know, more crit damage, Quick Scope is more damage, and those apply to snipers. Um, you know, if you don't have Totally Rocking Out, you can use Blast from the Past. If you don't have Blast from the Past, then you can use anything else that you want, really. Uh, you don't necessarily need any of these team perks to be effective. The reason I like Totally Rocking Out, of course, is because of the crit. Now, like I said, the crit doesn't apply to Stoneheart Farah's actual team perk or her actual commander perk, and it also doesn't apply to the Chain Lightning. But the good thing about it is that you'll get that base shot uh, to have a little bit more increased crit rating, as well as because you are using it, you'll have Battle Beat, and she'll give you 50% extra bonus damage um you know that you otherwise wouldn't be getting um as well as you know just because you're not able to crit you do get that 50 percent bonus damage whenever you're chaining and all that other kind of stuff so i find that um i find that the hero loadout works pretty well like i said you can do anything that you really want you can be as diverse as you want um when using this build and when playing with a full squad the highest number i was able uh, able to ever hit on a smasher was over 2 million now this did happen on stream i'll see if i can find the clip for it i believe i was under the impression or under the influence of Warcry at the time aside from that I'm hitting around like 1.6 to 1.8 million with this girl in support but I gotta say man she doesn't really buff the initial shot of your bow but being able to splint off and hit five enemies for 60% damage like every single time making any bow in the game an AoE monster yeah and also I don't know if I mentioned this or not you guys probably already know but she's a ninja so you're able to jump all over the place and do this stuff all at the same time and hitting huge crowds of enemies for massive amounts of damage. She's got the mobility, she's got the damage, she's got the AOE, she's got a little bit of everything. I absolutely love this hero. Uh, she's insanely fun, man. She's just really fun. If you guys haven't used any of the bows recently, pick them up, man. Pick up the bows, pick up this hero via the new quest line and just steamroll some enemies, man, because it's really fun. Um, I highly, highly recommend that you do perk up the, you know, vacuum tube. Uh, but if you don't have the vacuum tube, the Vendertech Seeker is really good. Pretty much any of the bows really are. But those are the two that I would recommend. Guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Those are my thoughts and opinions on Stoneheart Farah. She is just ridiculously fun, ridiculously reliable. And in my opinion, she's a pretty good meta hero. A very strong start for the first ever bow hero that we've received. But guys, that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. Just a quick first impressions video on this hero. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. That's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time.